Okay, today's daf is daf Yud Ches. We are beginning on daf Yud Zayin Omut Sheni. Uh, I would say three lines from the bottom by the Gemara Toshma. Come in here. So what we're talking about over here is a a, a fantastic machlokes. What's the machlokes about? As if you with you, if you have posel schach. Posel schach means something that cannot be used for schach. For example, you have like say metal studs as schach. So how much of the schach have to be put into the sukkah in order to make the sukkah invalid? Now, how do you make a sukkah invalid with posel schach? You have to imagine we spoke about this and Sheldon mentioned it uh, before uh, and pointed it out. We're talking about a sukkah that is that has three walls into it. And down the middle of the sukkah, you put this posel schach. So if it's a certain shear uh, of, of posel schach, that means you put schach, then the sukkah is divided into two parts. And each part only has two walls. Okay? So how much schach in the middle of that sukkah would posel the sukkah? So we learned two opinions before. One opinion was the opinion of, let's call it, um, that's the call it the opinion of Shmuel's pin uh, right over here. Amr of Yehuda Amr Shmuel, schach posel be'emza poisel ba'abo. That schach posel in the middle of a sukkah is four tefachim. Okay, four tefachim. Each tefach is about let's say three inches, so about twelve inches, about a foot. Min. Okay. The Rav Amar Rav says you have four amas. You have eight feet. If unless you have eight feet of posel schach. Only then you passel the sukkah. Smaller than eight feet of posel schach is still the sukkah is considered one and kosher. Big sheet of raf. So now the Gemara is asking. Hold on. Hi, Lewis. We just began. We are uh, three lines from the bottom. So the Gemara is asking a question according to the opinion that all you need is four tefachim. Oh, hi, Louis. Just begin. Toshima, come in here. Three lines from the bottom of Yudzayin Omacheni. Sikicha bin Sarim. If you make schach and you put up boards, shell eres of cedar words, yesh behem dalit, that's wide four tefachim. Now, nusarim are pieces of wood. And yet, they're considered Posel schach, the reason is because they're wide for tfachim. We saw this before. You have a wide piece of plank, it's posel schach. Divri hakol psula. Even Rameya, Rabbi Yehuda, both agree it's posel. Ein behen dalid, if it's not four, let's say it's three tfachim. Rabbi Meir posel. Rabbi Meir says it's posel. Rabbi Yehuda machshet. Rabbi Yehuda says it's kosher. Because it's smaller than four tfachim, Rabbi Yehuda says it's kosher. Rabbi Meir says if it's bigger than three tfachim, these planks, it still has a uh, status of posel schach. But here, now we go to Yudches Amur Aleph. And here comes the question. The Bryce says, Umoy de Rameir, Rameir would, would agree, Shem yesh bein neser leneser, if you have between each board, kimloy neser, a space of a board of kosher schach, shemenia pesel benem, you put the kosher schach in between, ukishera, and this sukkah would be kosher. So let's examine that. What Rameir is saying is this case. If you have schach in between each board, the, the sukkah could become valid. So now the Gemara is going to ask a question. Now, the board itself has a din of posel schach. So then everything could make perfect sense. Bishlam Lamandi Yamar, it would be very makes sense, this price according to the opinion. Bain be'emza, bain minetzad, whether you put schach posel in the middle or whether you put schach posel from the side, right at the beginning, at the side of the wall. All the, the shear is dalat ames, a four ames, mishum hachi kashera. It's this reason is why this suk is kosher. Why? Because each of these boards, just think about it, is only four tfachim. So this is kosher schach, right? It's only four tfachim. This is a four, but it's not four ames, four tfachim. And this is kosher schach, four tfachim. And this really, in essence, is kosher schach. It's not schach posel. And therefore, this would be considered a valid schukah. That's why Rabbi Meir would agree. But according to the opinion, 
that with the middle, if you put in the, even if you put schach, apostle uh, schach in the middle, you need, f- uh, even with four tfachim, that would pass a little sukkah. Amai kashera, why is this sukkah kosher? Because if you look at the sukkah over here, this would uh, this board, let's say, for example, would would divide up the suk into two parts, and each part would have a din like has two walls to it because the schuch, the schach puzzle, even with four tvachim, could puzzle a sukkah. So, why is this a kosher sukkah according to our mayor? Answers the Gemara. Amar Rav Huna with Rav Yeshua. Rav Huna with Rav Yeshua explained, Hacha the sukkah deloy havia elishmoina mitsumtsamas askinan. We're talking about a sukkah that has precisely. Exactly eight, uh, eight amas is the whole size of the sukkah. The yoiv neser upesel, the neser upesel. Each side you start off with a board, regular schach, board, regular schach. The neser upesel, mahaygisa, for one side you do that. The neser upesel, a board, and kosher schach. The neser upesel, the neser upesel, mahaygisa. You keep doing that. Each one, uh, board, schach, board, schach from one side, and board, schach, board, schach, board, schach from the other side. In the middle of the sukkah, you will have two sets of kosher schach, four tvachim. You have a kosher sukkah in the middle. You can see that clearly with this picture. Take a look at the picture. From the bottom, you see that this is talking about a special case. The sukkah is exactly eight amas. Okay? And you start off with board schach. Board, schach, board, schach from one side, right? Then you start from the other side. Board, schach, board, schach, board, schach from the other side. So in the middle, you have eight tvachim of schach. Eight tvachim of schach is the size of a sukkah. Now, where are your walls? Well, the walls will be this doifen akuma. This, uh, this doifen akuma. Why is this a doifen akuma? Because this is posel schach. These boards are posel schach but they can be a bent wall to each side wall. Now, you'll have 20 tfachim from the side wall to the middle of the sukkah. 20 tfachim is less than four amas. It's about three point something amas. And anything less than four amas, you could say doifen akuma. You do say the wall bends, as long as it's not a four amas of pasos chach. So therefore, that's why this is kosher sukkah, because you have a bent wall on one side, a bent wall on the other side, and you have eight tvachim, which is the size of regular sukkah. Regular sukkah only has to be seven tvachim. And that is the case that a mayor would agree. That was what the Gemara says. Oh, Amar Abaya. Now, now a new Gemara over here. A new Gemara over here. Amar Abaya. Abaya said a statement. Avir shloisha besuka gedola. We have space of three tfachim in a big sukkah, right? A big sukkah, large sukkah. You have a space that's larger than three tfachim. Okay, so that would pass the whole sukkah. Okay, that's agreed because you have a space, a gap of ear space of three tfachim that would pass the whole sukkah. Again, we're talking about a sukkah that only has three walls to it, and then. A min- middle of the schach, you have a gap of three tvachim that would pass the sukkah, right? But what happens? Umiatoi, you minimize the gap by putting there bein bekonim. You put regular schach, so now that you have a less than a, a gap of three tvachim, bein b'shapudin, or whether you put even a non-kosher schach there, the airspace now is less than three tvachim. Havemiyat, that is considered minimizing the space. And therefore, you're making the sukkah kosher that way because there's no gap of three tvachim or more. It doesn't matter how you fill up the space, whether you fill up the space with pasal schach, that will minimize ear space, and therefore, it will still be a kosher sukkah. So he says, but besukkah katana, but if you have a small sukkah, so then, let's say, what's a small sukkah? The smallest size of a sukkah is seven tvachim. So let's say you have an ear space of three tvachim in middle of the sukkah, three tvachim of ear space in middle of the seven, uh, in middle of the seven tefach sukkah, so to speak. So you have four tvachim covered with schach and three tvachim of plain ear. So then, if you want to make this kosher, bekonim havimi. If you put kosher schach, then you can make it a kosher sukkah. But shapudim loy havimi. But if you put 
Puzzle is chach, it would not be a kosher sukkah. And why is that? Because since you need at least, you have to have a, at least um, a space of most of the sukkah has to be covered with kosher schach. And then you, so if you're putting shapudim, puzzle is chach, you still will not have uh, uh, most of the sukkah cover, covered with kosher schach. And therefore, that's not considered minimizing the problem. Okay, so that's why that's not considered why why it's not minimizing. So let, let's look at Rashi. Rashi says like this: Kivan, since the Ika the Ika Gimot Fachem Bahadadi, the Nafke Mehachsha Sukha, Hashive Ba Ampe Nashiv and Mustafa Ba Dodo Lashlume Lashi Ura. Since the at the end of the day, you just have a gap of three Tfachem that does not have is not covered with Schach. You will not have a sheer sukkah at all in this sukkah. And therefore, by a sukkah katana, this would not work. Ah, aval be'emtza. But if you now, this was only talking about new, new thing, new gemara over here. When do we say a gap of avir is three tfachim? If you do, if you close up the gap, if there's three tfachim, or less, less than three tfachim, you close the gap. Again, less than three tfachim of ear space, you close the gap. Hani mili min hatsad. Only if the ear space, if the gap is on the wall. So you have a wall, and then you have a, 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 a space, let's say less than three tfachim, and then starts your kosher shukka. So the gap is closed off because you say lovud. Avo be'emsa, but let's say you have a gasp of, of, of less than three tfachim in the middle of Yisuka, pligi bar of Acha Ravina. There actually is a machloikis between Rav Acha and Ravina, a fantastic machloikis. Chad Amar once says, Yesh Lavud Be'emsa. You could actually close the airspace up in the middle. The Chad Amar ain't Lavud Be'emsa. A gap, any gap in the middle of the sukkah makes it possible. Let's see a picture of that. Here's the case before with the, with the, with the, you have a, a tefach of a sukkah katana, a small sukkah, right? Let's just go through the pictures again. In the beginning, we discussed a sukkah that has a large sukkah and it has a gap of three tefachim. Again, a gap of three tefachim would make this sukkah puzzle. If you put um, metal studs over here, rods, so therefore you don't have a gap airspace anymore of three tefachim, this would be a kosher sukkah. It doesn't matter if you put regular schach over here, or even non-kosher schach, at the end of the day, you don't have a ear space of three tfachim, so it is considered a kosher sukkah. In this case of a small sukkah, where you don't have uh, seven tfachim, you have seven tfachim, and then by the fourth tefach over here, there, if you put, uh, you have a gap of three tfachim, it would passel. Even if you put over here metal studs, it still wouldn't, it still wouldn't kasha the sukkah because at the end of the day, you're still more than three tvachim from the wall and you have a space over here. We would not say lovud to close up this space. Now, the Gemara says, there's a machloikis, ear space, we said that if it's less than three tvachim, one opinion is that this is kosher. If this is less than three tvachim, it's kosher, because what do you say? The concept of love it, close the gap. But one opinion says the only time we said close the gap is if the airspace is at the sides of the sukkah. If it's in the middle of the sukkah, ain't love it be So You never say close the airspace. So now Gemara brings a proof to each side. We don't know who said what. What Ravacha said something and Ravina said something. But my timer, the Gemara now goes and tries to explain everything. My timer, what is the reason the man de Oma with the opinion that says, Yesh lavud be'emsa. You do say you can close an airspace of three tfachim or less, even if it's in the middle of your sukkah. Where do you find that concept? The Tanya we learned to the Brisa. We know by a mavoi, the Gemara, you know, the picture of a mavoi, right? A mavoi is this, this thing over here where you have um, the question was in order to carry in this middle 
shared common driveway, so to speak, Chazal required a koira to go across the whole entranceway, a beam to go across the entranceway. So the Gemara is going to say, uh, the Mishnah Bryce is going to say, suppose somebody has a beam that only reaches halfway, like to the middle, and this one reaches halfway, and there's a gap of less than three tfachim in the in the in between. This is a kosher kaira. It still will allow you to carry in the driveway itself, and that make that's still kosher. So you see from this brisa that even if you have a gap of less than three in the middle, you do say close the gap. That's what. So that's your proof. The tanya we learned to the brisa koitza kaira yotzim in a kaisel zeh. The ain and the gas because first case is that if the beam crosses the whole entire entrance way, but it does not reach the other side, less than three tfachim, the chain state kairis. This is the picture that I just showed you. Achas yoitzim mekoisel zet. Achas yoitzim mekoisel acher. One comes, one beam crosses from one wall, and the other beam crosses from the other wall. The ain and gas zubazu and doesn't one doesn't touch each other. Pachas mishloisha, less than three tfachim, ain't sarach lahavi kairachasis. You don't have to bring a new beam. This is still kosher because it's less than three in the middle, so you close the gap. But shloisha, sarach lahavi kairachas. But if it was three tfachim or more, then you have to close, then you have to bring another beam. This is not a kosher way to make it. So you see clearly from here that you do say close the gap. You see that yesh loved bamsa. You close the gap. Even if it's in the middle of the of the situation, so just like you say it over here by Hilchas Shabbos, you should say it also by the Hilchas Sukkah. So if the Sukkah is over here, close the gap. So what does the other man the Yama do with this brisa? <clears throat> so the Idach, the other man the Yama holds Shani Karis Drabanan. The whole idea of putting this beam is anyway Drabana. It's not. It's it, it, the minatayra. You're allowed to carry in this uh, courtyard, in this driveway over here, because it's minatayra because it's private. It's walled off with three walls and on the side and the back. So certainly, so this whole thing is rabban, and the rabban can say that with less than three tefachim, we imagine it's closed. But by sukkah, which is a din dairaisa, could be any significant gap will invalidate your sukkah. So that's why he didn't buy by that source. So now. My time, uh, what where's the source of the opinion that says the man the Oma ain't love it by Emsa? That you don't say love it in the middle of the of the sukkah. How do you know that? So he brings a proof from a Mishnah. A Mishnah and Oilus. The Tanam we learned in a Mishnah. Aruba Shababayas Uba Paiseach Tefach, Tuma Babayas Kulay Tama. Masha Kineged Aruba Tahar. This is the picture. Very simple. You have a dead body in the house, okay? And if this was all closed off, everything in the room would be tame, right? Because this would be a nice oil. But here's the dead body, and the, the keili that's in the house is right next to a skylight that's opened a tefach. So then you say that everything in the house becomes tame, except this keili, because this is not under the same roof as the mace. So what do you see? And you don't say lovud that imagine this is closed because even though it's less than three tfachim, you want to imagine that it's closed and uh, this bekeli becomes tame. No, you say only stuff that's under the same roof as the as the mace that becomes tame. The the keli over here remains tar because it's not under the roof, and we don't say close the gap. So we see that you don't close the gap um, if it's larger than a tefachim, presumably. Uh, uh, even if, though it's smaller than three tefachim, you don't close it. And that's the proof to the other man, the Yomar. Aruba she babayis babzeh. That tumah babayis kula tame mashe keneged aruba, but what's opposite, the skylight is tar. So that's clearly a proof that you don't say close the gap. And this part of the Bryce mission is not clear, but uh, you have to learn the Gemara over there. Tumah keneged aruba, kula babayis kula tar. Oh, I'm sorry. If the tumah is under the skylight, then the rest of the house is tar. Fine. So basically, you see that even though this house has a gap, you don't say you imagine it's closed. So by Hilchas Tumas Ames, you don't say close the gap. So that's a proof to the opinion that says you don't say close the gap. Ain't love with Bamsa. The Idach, the other opinion will say, Shani Hilchas Tuma, Tuma is different. The Hochi Gemiri Luhu. That is a Kabbalah, a Halachalamashim Sinai. 
that by Hilchus Tumas Hames, you don't say close the gap. And that only was, was specific by Tumas Hames, but will not apply by Sukkah. Okay, so we have a, a machlekes, and we'll leave that machlekes for now, whether if you have a gap of less than three tfachim in the middle of the sukkah, is the sukkah possible? Because you say, you say you don't say, ain't love it be'emtza. You don't say close the gap. Or you do say, yesh love it be'emtza. If it's smaller than three tfachim, you do say close the gap. Imagine there's chach there. New, brand new Gemara, but interesting Gemara, off to the side. This is what the Gemara says. Darish Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi gave a speech. He said, bias shenifchas v'sikach al gabav k'sheira. You have a bias. I think we had this in the other page over here. You have a, a bias, a home. Uh, what's the home? Let's see if I have it. Yeah, here's the home. You have that bias, and you put schach over here. The ho- then you have a kosher sukkah. That's what he said. Everybody could make a, a skylight in their house and they'll have a kosher sukkah. So that's what he made a speech. So, but that's not a good, correct way to make a speech because you have to give the halachas. You have to have say, Amma lafon of Rabbi Shmo, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi, Rabbi Huda, he said to him, Rabbi, perish, explain your words because it's not always kosher. Kach perish abba. This is what my father would explain. Rabbi Yossi, when he gave such a speech, he would say, Arba Amas, if you have a distance of four Amas from the wall to the hole in the ceiling, Pesula, then the Pesukah would be possible. Pachas Ma'arba Amas, but less than four Amas, then the Sukkah would be Kesheira, that would be a kosher Sukkah. So this is qualified only if it's less than four Amas to the gap. And you just gave a, a, a blanket statement that it's always going to be kosher. That's not true. Then he, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Ba'aloi made, made another statement, another speech. Darish Rabbi Yehuda Ba'aloi. He said, I made a drasha, and he said, Avroima Sharye. This type of fish, um, which is called, it's called, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, the Abroimi fish, the Bruma fish, okay? Now, what is that, the Bruma fish? It's this fish over here. It's a kosher fish with skins and uh, fins and scales. The problem is that when you fish it, there's like shrutzim on it, like uh, algae or something that grows on it. And it's very hard to separate the organisms that are shrutzim from the fish. And therefore he said, so in generally, it would be puzzle to eat. It would, you'll not be allowed to eat such a fish. He said, it's always permitted. So Alma Lafon of Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Pirish, you got to explain your words. You can't just say it's always kosher. Kach Oma Abba, my father explained it. Shell Mokam Pliny, this fish, if you fish it from this particular place, Asura, it, it's not permitted because they have the organisms on it and 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 like shrutzim, and therefore you're not allowed to eat it because it, you're eating the shrutzim. You can't it can't separate it. Shell Mokam Pliny from another place, Mutaris, it would be permitted. Why? It's similar to this case. Kihod Amar Abaya, Haitzachanta de Bav. This fish called Sakhanta, if you fish it from the, um, the Bav Nahara, the Bav River, I don't know what, the Bav River, that's the name of the river. If you take this Sakhanta from this river, Sharia it's permitted because there, there's the organisms don't attach itself to the fish. Now, why are there no trefa organisms attaching themselves to the fish? My time, what's the reason? My time, what's the reason? Because the, in the Bav River, the water is rushing. It's moving constantly. The high dog tummy, this particular uh, uh, tummy fish that latches itself onto Tzchanta, since cave in the lace lay chutz hashedra, it doesn't have a spine. It doesn't stay. It doesn't stay on the fish. It actually just washes its way downstream so therefore when you fish this sakanta fish you can assume that there's no trefa fish or trefa organism uh uh not latching itself onto the fish so the gemara says that's not true we see that there the, the, there are um uh dog tummies tummy fish that could live in waters that are rushing they have a way to you know to maintain their buoyancy and they don't float downstream Ella must be the reason why in the Bav River it's, it's permitted is from the Malichimai because it has salty water. And the high dog tummy, this particular dog tummy, even the less like Kilfe, since it doesn't have scales that protect it from the salt, 
Loimotsikoye cannot survive in the Bav River. So that's not true. We do see this dog Tame, this dog Tame that connects itself or latches itself on to this, um, this, this uh, Tzachanta, even when the water is salty. So again, why if I fish this Tzachanta fish, which is a kosher fish, in the river of Bav, I could say I could eat the Tzachanta fish, and we don't say that there is like dog Tames or Tame organisms that latch itself on to this Tzachanta fish. The answer is, the reason is, there's the soil in this Dabav River does not have the nutrients to allow this dog tame to survive. And therefore, the Tzachanta fish survives there without the dog, this tame fish latching itself on. It's non existent because in the Bav River, they don't have the soil that will be able to provide a habitat for this dog tame. So there it doesn't exist. Amar Ravina, Ravina said, today, if you would fish in the Dabav River, you would be not allowed to eat the Tzachanta fish. Why? They built the canal. And therefore, the Shafki Nahar Esu Nahar Gamda Lahasam, then the river Esan and the river of Gamda are now have a canal that lead into the Bav River. Therefore, these organisms may come from elsewhere. These Tomei organisms come from elsewhere. They latch themselves on to the Tzachanta fish. And therefore, it's Asira to eat the Tzachanta, the tzachanta fish. You see um, uh, echoes of this in many of the kashras questions that they had years ago with tuna fish and dolphins um, that uh, are, are, it's very hard to separate them out. You know, sometimes uh, the tuna had, there was talk about that, that the, the, the dolphins swim with the tuna and therefore in within the tunas, you have the tray for dolphin fish. And also you see that, that these tray for organisms that they're talking about are so small that, you know, it's still also to eat them. And there was a there was also a controversy with New York water. You had the cocoa pods in there. And the, would that, uh, which are or, tiny, tiny algae like organisms that would render not being able to drink tap water. And that was all Shilas many, many years ago. But this is uh, based on these type of Gemaras. New Gemara. Itmar, we was taught in the uh, teaching. Sikach al gabe aksadr shiesh lo patzimin kashera. Shein lo patzimin abaya oma kashera. Verava oma pesula. So let's see the picture. The picture is you have an aksadra. Aksadra is like a, a portico, porch. And it has this uh, uh, nice wooden uh, uh, roof that sticks out of the walls of the houses. And you built walls like with stick walls, less than three tfocham in between each pole. So then you have a regular kosher sukkah in the middle. You have three walls over here because you say lovud uh, on the walls. And therefore, this is kosher. Fine. But let's say ein lo pasimin. Here's a fantastic machlekes. You have a sukkah that looks like this, that you have the, you have the, uh, a, 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 a like a roof coming out of the of the houses over here that hold up kosher schach in the middle. So there's no walls over here because this is more than four amas away. Let's assume there's more than four amas from this wall to the middle of the kosher schach. Says Rabbi, it's still kosher schukah. Why? Because the ledge of the sukkah, if it has a thickness, the schach has a thickness to it. Imagine this schach is about three inches thick. That comes down, you imagine imaginary wall all around. Fantastic. Pia Tikra, the, the ledge, the lip of this roof comes down and closes up a, a sukkah of four walls. That's what he says. Ain la petzim, if you don't have any walls or poles around, abaya ama kashera, rava ama pesula. Rabbi says it's kosher, and rava says it's pasa. Abaya ama kashera, abaya says it's a kosher sukkah, because Amrina, we say, we say that the mouth, the ledge of the roof comes down and closes off the area. And then you have four walls. Rava ama pesula. Rava says it's possible. We don't say the ledge of the roof comes down. Good asik. And you imagine, imagine the walls. The fact is there is no walls over here. Now, the Gemara, Rava asks Obaya, if according to you is correct, then you don't even need, Rava asks a fantastic question to Abaya. 
According to your opinion, the Amrit, you say, that the ledge of the roof comes down and closes up the area. Even if you're missing middle wall, if you just have this, two walls facing each other, according to you, what's, what's ever a problem of a sukkah not having three walls, not having enough walls. If you say the roof becomes a wall, so let's say you have a, a, a wall over here, two walls. So you would say it's a puzzle of sukkah. Why is it puzzle? Because it doesn't have enough walls. The, 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 we should say that the ledge of the roof should come down and make an imaginary wall. Because Abaya's opinion is that you always use your imagination. Imagine that this thickness of a wall is the start, the thickness of this cock is the start of a new wall. So according to you, Abaya, you should have a third wall. It shouldn't be puzzle. So you know what Abaya is going to answer? So Abaya is going to say, Amaleya, Abaya is going to say, Medina loch bahahi. I would agree that's a puzzle. That's like an open alleyway. The reason is because physically, you're right. You would say that the wall comes down. But physically, people will walk through this sukkah, you know, taking shortcuts through the sukkah. It's like a public thoroughfare. That's why it's a puzzle of sukkah. So Abaye is limiting himself, saying not always will you say, peace tikra yoyr v'soysim, the ledge will close down the area to make a wall, an imaginary wall. It's not in all cases. So, but our rubber says you don't say it. Lema, what let us say, and this will end off over here. Lema, let us say, Abai the Rava, but plukta the Rav U Shmuel Komi Palgi. Abai and Rava are arguing in this machloikis of Rav and Shmuel. We had this picture before because take a look at over here, this picture, and this is a familiar picture. You have this uh four poles and guy put up a roof in the middle of a desert, in the middle of nowhere, right? In the middle of a, of a valley, nobody passes here. And he wants to spend here Shabbos over here and to carry around underneath the roof. So would you say, since he has no walls over here, uh, it's a good campsite because it's a good Rosh because you say P Tikra, the ledge of the roof goes down. So look at this. It seems to be a similar machlekes. Rav says, a porch uh, up, uh, in a valley. Rav Alma Rav says, you'll have to carry all around underneath that roof. The Amrinim, because we say, the ledge of the roof is as if it closes off an area, makes a wall all around. Shmuel says, Shmuel says, ain't metal to limbo, eladal amis, you can't carry underneath that area only for Amis. You imagine it's like a Rosh Hashanah. This is not considered a private domain. So this Machloikis between Rav, who says you could carry under here, he will hold like a Baya. And Shmuel, who says you can't carry under here because you don't say he will hold that wad like Rav. You don't say that. So same idea that you find by Hilcha Shabbos, you'll say the same idea by Hilcha Sukkah. So Bay and Rava are very much linked to the Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel. That's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says, Aliba de Shmuel kuli alma If you hold like Shmuel and say by Hilcha Shabbos, you don't say pi tikra yoyed v'soysim, then there's no argument that Abaya must hold like Rav. Rabbi cannot align himself with Shmuel because by here, um, by if you don't say P Tikr Yerd Versaisen by Hilchas Shabbos, you're certainly not going to say it by Hilchas Sukkah. But the Gemara continues on the first of Omid Beis of Yutes Amid Aleph, Ki Pligi Aliba the Rav. Can, but there could be an argument of, of Rav. Of Rav says uh, uh, that just like Rav says that this works. By Hilcha Shabbos, Abaya will just extend what Rav said. Abaya Kirav. Abaya will say, I align myself with the opinion of Rav. That just like Rav said by over here, by Hilcha Shabbos, you say P Tikr Yod Vasoisem. So also by Hilcha Sukkah, you will say P Tikr Yod Vasoisem. You'll say, just like uh, saying the same thing. Imagine this has three walls over here. What's the difference? But says the Gemara, Rava Amma, Rava says, Lama Lach, Rava will say to you like this, Ad kan loy Rav Hasam, Rav didn't tell you over there that you could say, Pete Tikri Yoyi Vesoysim, 
Elo de Mechitzas de la Sadra Hi de Avidi. The walls are meant for that particular roof. Aval Hocha, the Lav Lohi Avidi, it wasn't meant for this particular roof. Loy. If you think about it, it's a fantastic uh, difference. You see, in this case where Rav says, you could say, because what roof is this? This is a roof for, the, for underneath. So the ledge of the roof brings down a wall that encloses the area underneath. So that's why Rav says, the ledge of the roof will close off the walls all in by Hilcha Shabbos. But notice carefully over here, by this case, where is the this roof, the ledge that's coming out of the house? It's really, it's really coming from the house. If you draw the wall down, the wall should work only for what's underneath the, the, the extension roof coming from the house. But what you're trying to say is that P Tikr Yard Vasaisim, that you imagine the wall will now be a wall for something beyond the house, which is beyond the area of the of this extension. It should work for the middle of the area, which is to work for the middle of the sukkah. That Rav would not say. The only time Rav says that, that the roof can become a wall if you're enclosing the area underneath the roof. Like in this case, by the case of the Shabbos, we are closing the area underneath the roof. Then Rav says that the, the roof can become part of the wall. But if you're closing the area that's beyond the roof into the middle over here, then Rav would not hold P. Tikr Yair That's why Rav has said you cannot apply what you learned by Rav to Hilchais. Hilcha Shabbos, to Hilcha Sukkah. It only applies by the case of Hilcha Shabbos, but not by Hilcha Sukkah. So again, this is fantastic, Machloikas. Everybody would agree, everybody would agree possibly that there is a concept called P. Tikra Yoyud Vesoysim. Uh, that you would say that the roof can become a wall. Very fa fascinating. You could say that, but it's in the case of Hilcha Sukkah, would you extend it to this area where you're going to say that the roof can become a wall for something beyond the roof to something in between? That would be the machloikis between uh, uh, Rava, who says not, Abaya says yes. And even according to, uh, uh, one last point, even according to Abaya, where you say that the roof can become a wall, even if you only have two walls, you wouldn't say that the roof becomes a third wall because at the end of the day, it's only you're using your imagination over here. At the end of the day, people walk through this sukkah and go from one place and one, to another. So therefore, this will remain a possible sukkah. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, uh, with this machlekes between Abaya and Rava. Shikur. Shikur. Okay. Very interesting stuff, Baruch. Yes, it is. It is, but, it, but this is a, it's only, it's Baruch Hashem that we can at least show it uh, visually. So uh, it, it makes Gemara easier to explain and it goes a lot faster. Sure. Okay, very good. I got the Nacht, everybody. I got the Nacht, Baruch.